so that I can get the zoom buttons. So I open the raster image here, I've got the map here, and basically I'm going to match the two up. So first thing to do is open the raster image, in this case Fly Orchid. After a while you'll see it open in here. Well, first thing we have to do is tell it what coordinate reference system to use. We want OSGB 1936, the British National Grid in other words. If you don't see it in these lists up here, start typing it up there and you soon will see it and you can just select it and OK it. OK, there's the image. Here we've got a map open. I've got the Vice County bound boundaries open. So we should start to be able to match those up. If I zoom into the Lean Peninsula here in Wales, do the same on the image. See, I've got a reasonable image here, and I could say, OK, match that point in, in terms of the number of pixels in the image and match it to these real-world coordinates uh, in the GIS. And that's essentially what we do. We need to do that three or four times over this entire image to match them up. Now, um, it so happens that the, this map here, this image, this raster image, has got the grid squares on it. So rather than try and match up some quite indistinct points, say, on the coastline here with the GIS, I'm going to use these boundaries here. But of course, I need to see those boundaries in the GIS as well. So I'm just going to put those on now using um, another tool, which is the Tombio OSGR tool. So I'm just going to set this to the uh, 100 kilometers squares, which are the ones shown on the raster image, and create those in my GIS too. OK, let's take the labels off. And that's what I'm going to match up, some of these squares. So let's we need, ideally, four really widely spaced points. And so conveniently, in this map of the UK, there's a, a nice clean point that I can see there where the grid lines intersect. And there's one just there as well in Essex where they intersect. So those two widely spaced points in the south of England do quite nicely. So those are the ones I'm going to do first of all. Let's zoom in there. Now, the closer I zoom, the better the results will be. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm not going to zoom too closely. So I zoom to the, roughly the same area in the map here. And then I basically create points and match them up. So I'm going to use this button here, Add Point. And I now have to click on the raster image at the point that I want to register. So get that as close as I can and click. And then I click the same point on the map image. So it says from map canvas here, and that corresponds to this point here. I can zoom and pan in between. So you haven't got to get it in the right place first before you do this, but I'm, I've just sort of zoomed it into the right areas for um, speed purposes here. So again, I'm not going to pan and zoom now, but I could do. I'm just going to go straight to that point. Click on the second point from map canvas, find the same point on the map, which is there. So that's two nice points in the south of England, and now we want some in the north. So I will have to zoom it and pan it in this case. And these two are quite convenient, nice clean points um, to line it up with. Or I could do these two up here. Let's do these two up here. So let's zoom in there. Just up near the Hebrides. Get the same area on the map. So I'm looking at lining up those two points with those two there. So hit the create point button again and click on the map oh, on the raster image in the right place. From map canvas, do the same here. OK it. And again there. From map canvas, get the right point there. OK it. And now we've got four, four points and we can actually run the registration now, which we do from this button here. Start georeferencing. So I'll click that. It says please tra set transformation type and I can do that in the next dialog that comes up. In fact, I can accept the defaults here. Now what I want to do is create a world file because we can use that in another tool, the map mashup tool from the Tombio tools. Um, but if I just 
click that and try and run the thing, it complains that I've got a file name in here. It's a bit buggy, this registration tool. So I'm going to unclick it and put a file name in there. It doesn't matter what I write in there, actually, because it won't be created if I check, check this create world file. So that's what I'm doing. Say OK. And now it will have created that raster image. So if I actually try and open a raster layer now, well, it hasn't created a raster image. It's created a world file, a WLD file, to go with the Fly Orchid file. But if I open the Fly Orchid file now, and I say British National Grid, it's going to use the information in that WLD file to put it in the right place on the map. OK, so there, I'll just get rid of the georeferencer at this point. So there we now have that raster image, but it's actually in the GIS up here. You can see the layer here. Let's put the grid squares I created on top of it. And let's put the vice county boundaries so you can see them over the top. And there you go. You can display that now with any data and you can keep it as a layer which you can open time and again as long as you've got that world file uh, together with it in the same folder. And we'll use those world file files later in the map mashup tool and I'll also do another demonstration to show you how useful it is to actually have the